Thank you, Corbin. Thank you, Pro Tem Greg Treat, Speaker Charles McCall, and members of the state legislature. Thank you to Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell, and congratulations to all the elected statewide officials. I am looking forward to rolling up my sleeves and working with you on, on important tasks we have ahead of us to make Oklahoma a top 10 state. <sighs> And thank you to my friends representing the tribal nations that are here today. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Justice John Kane and justices of the Supreme Court. I want to also thank Governor Keating for being here today. And to my beautiful wife, Sarah, I would not be here today without you by my side over the past 25 years. And to my six children, Natalie, my new son-in-law, Joseph, Drew, Kate, Piper, Remington, and Houston. I love you so much, and I'm so proud of each and every one of you. Thank you to my mom and dad. My mom and dad, my two brothers that are here, Sarah's family. Honored guests, friends, and my fellow Oklahomans. It is with deep gratitude and thanks to my Heavenly Father and with determination in my heart that I stand before you today as governor of the great state of Oklahoma. <clears throat> For more than a century, our history was marked by booms and busts. The cycle left us dependent on a few industries and special interests, and it left us with a sense of mediocrity, as if we were forced to accept our state was bottom of the barrel or limited, but Oklahomans proved our people are the answer to our greatest challenges. It's why the nation knows and respects a term we coined as the Oklahoma standard. In our hardest chapters, Oklahomans have shown that compassion and hope for our fellow citizens are what unites and sustains us. This is the quality that defines our future and potential and it is the character of Oklahomans that we must preserve and continue to teach to the next generation. For decades, we were restless. We asked why our state wasn't growing and securing new opportunities like the rest of the nation. We began to see that we have everything we need to break the cycles of the booms and the busts. With our vast land and our abundant natural resources, with our people and work ethic, with our faith in God, and with our shared history as a state, we could build a stronger economy and more sustainable Oklahoma. When I took office four years ago, the state was in the throes of another downturn. We were emerging from year after year, year budget shortfalls and a government in disarray from political finger pointing and shifting blame. Spending sprees in the good years left us vulnerable in the down years. In short, government was not working, it was not generating the promises of certainty and stability for the people of Oklahoma. As your governor, I cast a vision for a turnaround that would put Oklahoma on a journey to be viewed nationwide as a top 10 state. I said, we can be top 10 in everything we do. My desire was simple to give Oklahomans the confidence and belief that when working together, anything is possible. We take second place to no other state. And friends, I am proud to say that today, the American dream is alive and well right here in Oklahoma. <clears throat> we built the largest savings account in Oklahoma's history turning budget deficits into nearly a $4 billion savings account, the foundation for a top 10 future. We gave teachers another pay raise, bringing our professional educators to top in the region and paying benefits. We gave our brave law enforcement officers a long overdue pay raise and the support and added resources they need to support 
and keep our communities safe. We stood up for and defended those who defended us, backing our veterans and supporting our state's world-class military bases. We've made, we've made state government more accountable to the taxpayer, ending the state's history of lending our largest agency's decisions to unelected and unattouchable bureaucrats. We gave, we gave people second chances and surrounded them with the support to succeed. We doubled our pipeline of new businesses moving to our state. Please join me in thanking the hard work and collaboration of my colleagues on this platform who serve with me in the state capitol. Right away, our top 10 vision was put to the test. When we gathered on these steps four years ago, none of us could have imagined a pandemic would test the core of who we are as Americans, as Oklahomans, and as neighbors. We had to ask ourselves, would we look only to the government to save us? Would we simply batten down the hatches and wait out another bust? Not this time. In 2020, Oklahoma did not put our Constitution in the attic, nor did we set aside the principles of our forefathers who sought to establish a government guaranteeing the individual's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <clears throat> the great American dream has endured in this state. And now, more than ever before, people are looking to Oklahoma as the place to find opportunity and to live freely. Oklahoma has become one of the most desirable states in the nation to live, to work, and to raise a family. In fact, new census data released last week now ranks Oklahoma as top 10 in states with highest net migration. Because when other, because when other states shut down, Oklahoma chose freedom and personal responsibility. We led with both courage and compassion, and we did not surrender our citizens to groupthink. Together, we fortified our focus that freedom and fairness would deliver hope and opportunity for all. It's this spirit that will continue to guide us and deliver the top 10 outcomes we know Oklahoma can achieve. And we will continue our march to the top. It will come by building a strong economy, an education system that prepares all children for success, a limited government that is accountable for generations to come, and a culture that respects and protects each person's constitutional right to fairness, family, and freedom of faith. <clears throat> When the world was at a standstill, and while other economies crumbled, our state's economy grew. When other states experienced a setback, Oklahoma discovered its comeback. During a pandemic, we cut taxes for every single Oklahoman and for job creators to keep businesses growing. That has played a significant role in delivering the most diversified economy in Oklahoma history. And we're going to keep moving the needle on reducing taxes over the next four years and getting government out of the way. Because in Oklahoma, we acknowledge that the government doesn't create jobs. Government's role is to ensure a level playing field for everyone to compete, no matter your current economic status, race, ethnicity, or background. We want everyone to have the same opportunity to chase their dreams and to make their lives better today and into the next generation. <clears throat> to preserve our healthy economy, we must also prepare our next generation. I'm honored to be hosting today these young people sitting in front of me. 
Please help me welcome students from the incredible schools of Broken Arrow, Deer Creek, Dove, Santa Fe South Charter, Ulagatalala, Crossings, and Oklahoma Christian. To the students and to your parents, I want you to hear directly from me. I do not accept that Oklahoma's education system is ranked near the bottom. I will fight every single day for you because I know that Texans are not smarter than Oklahomans. Neither are the people in Florida, Tennessee, Arizona, or Michigan. We are America's pioneers. We are the people who fueled the nation's expansion. We are the dreamers, the go-getters, the can-doers. And it's time to unleash our state's full potential. It's time to rethink education in Oklahoma. It's time for the tough conversations to address what's working and what's not. It's time to teach kids how to think, not what to think. <clears throat> and that means we must give students more access to learning methods that fit their unique needs. We need more schools, not less schools, like the fear mongers claimed when we called for change. We have examples of this emerging all across our state, like the Aviation Academy in Norman, which is preparing students, today's youth, to become pilots and airline mechanics. And look to Santa Fe South Charter. They sang for us today. They are addressing a unique need for South Oklahoma City by embracing families where a child could be the only bilingual speaker in their home. Instead of ignoring a child's heart language, Santa Fe South embraces it and teaches children how to navigate both languages to their own personal success. We expanded education freedom for more students because we believe every kid deserves the best education possible regardless of his or her economic status or zip code. <clears throat> Just one year ago, after we passed the open transfer law, thousands of students are now taking advantage and can now choose to attend a school that better fits their needs. Like Charles Page High School in Sand Springs, which creates a tailored learning plan for every one of their students. Rural schools like Woodward are partnering with career techs and they are thriving. Parents, we're gonna fight for you. We're gonna change and challenge the status quo. We're gonna break out of the bottom and we're gonna break into the top 10. <clears throat> Oklahoma, our children and grandchildren depend on the choices we make today. We have a responsibility to do whatever it takes to give our children, not just the next generation, but today's children, right here in front of us, access to top 10 education choices. Because education is not the only government institution we're gonna hold accountable for change and measurable outcomes. We have bureaucrats in Washington, D.C who think the only solution to improving the plight of our fellow Americans is more government. But I'm here to tell you, more government is not the solution to our problems. Most of the time, government is the problem. You reelected me to make government more limited and more accountable to you. One of the clearest examples of our progress and accountability is the Department of Corrections. Four years ago, the legislature gave the executive branch the ability to hire the director to run the agency under a unified vision. As a result, we have closed four prisons, safely reducing the number of inmates by over 5,000. We gave our frontline professionals a much needed pay raise, and we saved the taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars. We did this all while reducing crime and leading the nation in the lowest recidivism rate. Mm. 
Across several state agencies, we push for flat budgets, and we've shrunk the size of government while also delivering better, more efficient services to the taxpayer. And there's more to do. I believe Oklahomans recognize that too. Because it was you, the voter, who rejected special interests last November that were fighting to stop our top 10 agenda. You recognize that these hidden groups were fighting to preserve their monopolies, their control and unfair advantage. You demanded a leader who is here for one purpose, to serve you, the people, to serve all 4 million Oklahomans, and to make Oklahoma a top 10 state. <clears throat> and I promise that while I'm in this role, I will work to maintain your trust and put you, the taxpayer, first. And I will fight tirelessly to make the government do the same. Today, I offer one final pledge. Together, we will protect our way of life in Oklahoma. We'll protect a farmer's right to work on their land and raise their livestock. We'll protect an unborn child's right to live. We'll protect... We will protect the religious liberty for all and everyone's right to worship freely. We will protect parents' rights to raise and educate their children without government intervention. We will protect citizens' rights to speak and think freely. And always, always, we will stand up and defend individual freedoms over government control. And to my colleagues on this platform with me today, we are only here for a short time. Now is the time. It's time to keep moving forward with big ideas and to get them across the finish line for today's children as well as the next generation. Because I believe what you dream about, what you think about, and what you work for, it's going to happen. You're either green and growing or, or ripe and rotten. And Oklahomans voted to keep growing, to keep dreaming, to keep believing. And in closing, I'd like to take a moment to recall President Abraham Lincoln's words in his second inaugural address. The Civil War was days away from coming to an end. It was a war of Americans fighting and killing Americans over deeply held beliefs of how this country would view freedom, fairness, and a human life moving forward. Lincoln had campaigned amid unprecedented division. And in winning re-election, he called for citizens to set aside malice towards each other and to extend charity to all, to give grace to the fellow American that had become an enemy in war, and to fulfill the promise of a nation where every individual was equal under the law. He called Americans to focus on this work left to finish, a work ordained by God to build America as a land of freedom for all. Friends, today I'm asking you to join me. Leave Washington, D.C. to its political games, and let's focus here at home where we're all Oklahomans as our Constitution and preamble As our Constitution's preamble says, may we invoke the guidance of Almighty God. May we protect and continue the blessings of liberty. May we execute a fair government. And we, may we promote health, happiness, and opportunity for every citizen. In Oklahoma, may we be united by what the future will hold when we are committed to freedom and fairness for all. God bless you. And God bless the great state of Oklahoma.